Welcome everybody to Panfish Nation along with Mark. I'm Lyle. And Mark, we got a different kind of show tonight. Yeah, we do. Uh kind of came uh, up with the idea today after struggling all day with the walleye, but I, I walked away uh a smart a little bit smarter. So uh uh we'll build from there. I wanna thank the people real quick. I see Luke's out there. I want to thank him. He, he set me in the right direction and talked to some local guys, but we'll talk about that whole process here during the show. So how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Had a busy day yesterday and a busy day today. So big, big shout out to everybody who was on Chad's show. Sorry I missed it. We were a little busy. We picked up those two puppies today. Maybe my wife will bring them in here in a little while and I'll show them off to everybody. Cause they're I'm kind of cute. Today. Yeah, they're pretty cute. Pretty cute, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me holler at her. All right, sorry about that. So in chat, I'm already getting blamed for stuff I did not do. <laughs> yes, you did, Lyle. Though I didn't. <laughs> this has been going on for five minutes. It has been. I had to listen to it. <laughs> I had to listen to it. And I, I oh, agree I with you, Cindy. Yes, he did do it. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Say hello to everybody, Lyle. Let's do it, buddy. All right, but we're gonna start at the top. I see Keith over at NWPA Fishing. What's up? There's AJH Big Wrench Catfishing in the house. There is Catfish Regulators. What's up, Aaron? How you doing, bud? I see Miss Chrissy Brown. She's a she's a member of the channel. Thank you for your support, Chrissy. There's Cindy Stokes. Yes, he did do it, Cindy. It's all his fault. Double it's hook not. angling. What's up, Dave? Fish flex in the house. How you doing, bud? Fish and freedom. What's up, Richard? What's up? There's our buddy Luke. Fish on Luke. He's heading out to that catfish conference. That's going to be a good time. I can't wait to listen to that. Uh, there's Zach over at Florida Fishing Guru. You know, he sent me some pictures of some small tarpon he's been on through instagram and i'm telling you that them tarpon look like a hell of a good time um it's all mine what's up michelle how you doing there's joe buck he's a channel member slash supporter what's up joe buck he's always around uh lance mccoo guy lance I, ha I haven't heard if you've gotten on them kings but i know they're they're in i've been seeing pictures from waukegan a lot so hopefully you're getting on them lg bass in the house there's mr Marillo's family fishing pnb cat fishing aka paul boyd what's up paul there's troy he's also a channel member over at real and virtual outdoors what's up troy how you doing troy plays some online gaming during the week if you guys want to check him out you can find him at real and virtual outdoors uh yeah, so was first in the, in the uh, chat tonight first in the chat awesome he's always sharing out our links too so we appreciate you very yeah. much um, there is uh Ricky over at Solo Text Adventures. How you doing, Ricky? Steve Ransom in the house. There's our buddy Josh, the weekend angler, Uncle Jeep, real gals fish, the Mississippi. That is God's truck. What's up, Stephanie? I see Chad just popped in here. What's up, Chadwick? How you doing? Uh, big wrench. I think I might have got you. If not, I apologize. I'm getting you now. Uh, I think I got oh, there's Sampy. What's up, Mike Sampson? How you doing, bud? Uh, flatted season's coming to an end, Mike. Uh, hopefully, we got a couple of weeks. We're gonna get we're gonna get back out on them and see what happens. I think I got everybody, Lyle. If you see anybody that I missed, please shout them out for me. Did you get P and B? I think I did. I got Paul Boyd. Okay, uh, LG Bass. LG, what's going on, LG? Congratulations! Did you see that picture of that big old sixty-three I pound? Did. That was a great fish. Uh, Solo Texan Adventures. Look at this. Flex, fish Flex. <laughs> What's that, Fish Flex? Team Chad and D. I guess they're talking about the couples tournament. There's Mr. Gadget Fishing. There's Creole Cat Fishing. Hello, everybody. What's going on? All right, here comes the wife. Are you coming in here, Shane? Fin Seeker. Fin Seeker Outdoors. What's going on, Jeremy? How you doing? Check out Jeremy's channel. I know he finally got, I believe he got monetize i don't lyle i know you're not a big fan but i'm jealous he got himself a live scope <laughs> well, it's not that i'm not a fan i'm just tired of everybody talking about it all the time yeah i don't, I care, they, I don't care how good they are enough guys enough. This, here's one this is <laughs> lulu <laughs> lulu look this is lulu catfish tribish that's her official name Where's the other one? <laughs> and then we got the other one just ran away from the wife they're actually pretty good. They're taking her really well. That's oh, good. Her in here in a second. Like I said, I'm a proud dad. I need to brag a little. Uh-oh, here she comes. And this is Dee Dee. 
D D crappy Pshibish. She was the runt of the litter, so she's a little smaller. <laughs> but <they're laughs> that other is not the runt. <laughs> that other put together. Oh yeah, that other one's pretty built. We couldn't yeah. take one without the other. They're sisters; they get along real well. So that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. So I'll have to keep me company. Florida fishing guru. That's my buddy Zach. Good dude. He does a lot of kayak fishing. Marillo family fishing. Chad says, "Oh, you named one after D. Actually, Dee Dee is a, a character from Dexter's Laboratory. She's the bratty sister. That's how we named her, Dee Dee." Sweet. Hey, there's Crappy Day Fish on in the house. Hello, bud. How are you doing? Double hook mangling. Hey, Dave. How you doing? So, Lyle, like I said, I came up with that idea while uh, on my walleye fishing adventure or journey, I should say, here on the Fox River. But uh, a couple other ideas that I was having is I wanted to ask you how you went about and what it was like getting started in tournament fishing. Um. When I started tournament fishing, there was only one big tournament series, and most of the tournaments we fished was small tournaments. Um, and we started fishing the big tournaments. I started fishing them with my kids, and um, um, they was out of there was a group out of um, um, Missouri, and they went all over the place uh, and done tournaments, and we followed them around. And uh, when we got to finishing in the top five pretty consistently, winning one or two and, and getting seconds a lot and thirds a lot, then about that time some of the other big series come along, we just fell into them, you know. Uh -huh. and, and then when Cindy got involved in it, we got to the point where we only fished big tournaments. We didn't fish any of the small ones. Uh, well, well, what was the learning process like at the very beginning? Like, what did you go through growing into in, in, into the sport? I mean, you got to start. You got to start somewhere, right? And I imagine tournament catfishing is not easy. Well, when we started, there there was no bumping. Nobody knew what that was. You didn't drift fish. You didn't do any of that. You anchor fished. That that's all anybody knew how to do. And nobody realized when I started that you could catch big blues and we knew they was there, but you couldn't catch them consistently. Nobody knew how. And once the tournament started getting to the point where they paid out uh, bigger amounts of money, people started figuring that stuff out. But it was just, um, uh, when we started, it was like going to a, uh, a weekend, uh, throw ten dollars in the bucket and winner take all type thing. Mm -hmm. That's how the tournaments was when I started. And um but that was 30 years ago. You know it seems just like yesterday, don't it? 30 years ago? Yeah. My you know, mm -hmm. when my kids was little, I fished with with uh, Keith Atkins. Him and I fished a lot of tournaments together, had a lot of a lot of fun. And um when uh Cook's boat and motor started having tournaments once a year in Louisiana they would have a Cook's Boat and Motor tournament. And they give away a boat, motor, and trailer. Wow. Uh, they got, they would, the last three tournaments they had was uh, 97 entries, 107, and I think the last one was like 110. And they was the biggest tournaments anywhere in the nation. Nobody, nobody even dreamed about giving away boats, but he got the trailer company to sponsor a trailer. He got the, the, uh, uh, motor people to give a donate a motor and then he got CR to donate the the boats and he made cooks editions out of them and um, if you was caught a fish in the tournament you didn't have to win the then you was in a drawing to win the boat oh that's cool Which I still think that's probably one of the most fair ways to give away big prizes I think I so too uh I did, did. Uh, what's going on Kim how you doing definitely you know People go out there and they catch fish consistently. Some catch big fish consistently, but to do it on a weekly basis in a tournament when you're fishing waters that you don't know or you're unfamiliar with against other guys who are just as good, if not better than yourself, luck mm -hmm. plays a big part of that, don't it? Yeah. You know, in I those mean, days, we didn't even know what skipjack was. Had no idea. The first time I ever used a skipjack, I was fishing a tournament with my cousin, and um, this guy walked up to us, and, and uh, Gene knew who he was, and he introduced me to him, and uh, he handed me a frozen skipjack wrapped up 
in the cellophane. And I said, do I need that? He said, yes, you do. And I said, okay. And this guy fished a lot of tournaments and stuff. He was a lot older than me, and I didn't know him. And uh, Gene told me his name, and I got to be good friends with him and his son later on. And uh, we would leave out of Louisiana, Missouri. It was 11 miles to the Clarksville Dam, and it was a race to see how many of you get there first to get locked through so you could fish underneath that Clarksville Dam. In those days, if you wanted to catch a big fish, it was below the Clarksville Dam. Nobody went to Alton. Alton was a fig newton of somebody's imagination in those days. Mm -hmm. But then they started moving in the nets and the commercial fishing got to be tough and up northern parts. And uh, uh, they don't do as nearly as much of that around Alton as they did up there. But in those days, it was Clarksville and and uh, you'd catch 65, 70 pound fish, three or four of them a day down there uh, in a tournament. Different guys would. And um, 150, 200 pound weigh ins on five fish. And uh, it was a lot of fun. But the ones that did, if you did got there late, there wasn't a spot underneath the dam. You'd be too close. So other people fished above it. Uh, but one of the places that I like to fish, there's a couple of islands up there between Clarksville and, and Louisiana. And there's a cut through between them islands with real fast current, a big deep hole has been there for a hundred years, I guess. And that was one of my favorite places to fish. Didn't always catch fish there, but there was always good fish in there. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all kind of like you got, it goes back to the title of the show. You got to start somewhere and that yeah. you build that whole, you know, uh, you know, database or that whole, you know, data set of, pardon me, that's what the analyst and me coming out of, of <laughs> information from, from trial and error and, and people you meet. I mean, you didn't know what a skipjack was and the gentleman oh. introduced you to that. And, yeah. and I remember videos, uh, a video, I think it was, was Steve, might've been a Steve Douglas video where, with the first dragon weights that some guy came up with. I remember seeing plastic tubes. Larry full Hughes. Of yeah. That, that was, that was Larry who did that. I don't Larry, recall. Larry did, talked about that first on Catfish Weekly. Okay. We, I went, we, he, we done a show with Larry and uh -huh. he talked all about it, told everybody how he done it. And we all met up and we were fishing a tournament down in Owensboro, Kentucky. And Steve interviewed Larry down there after we'd done the show with him and got a great show, a, a great video out of visiting with Larry and Larry explaining things to Steve where he was right beside him and put that together. But we had Larry on Catfish Weekly and he, he introduced the, the dragon weights to us and told about Testament in his bathtub and, and all mm -hmm. that stuff uh, like a month before that. Cool deal. Yeah, I mean, that, that's how it grows. I know now. Um, I last year I, I started dragging here on the fox, and people were looking at me like I was crazy, and then they're finding out I was having you know 17, 20 fish days, even with just small channel cats. I'd always come up with one or two big ones doing that because you're covering so much ground and a couple of flatheads caught that way. And and now now I know a couple of people that are, are doing it up here, and, and and that's how it starts. And yeah, you know. Like today when I was out walleye fishing, I uh um big shout out to uh Dam River Boys. He was watching me. I was on Hog Legs channel. I like to go on there if I'm fishing late at night or whatever. It's it's good to have somebody in your ear keeping you company, somebody chew the fat with while you're fishing. So I like going on there. Plus Hog Leg and Kenneth are good people as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Um and uh this was the first time I was uh trolling for uh uh, for a while, I, like I said, I talked a little bit to Luke on my show, and then I talked to him for a few minutes after and before. Uh, they pointed me in the right direction. I met a gentleman named Dick out on the water, a real nice guy, older gentleman, had a real nice Lund, Lyle. I was drooling over his 1,800 <laughs> fishermen. Oh, yeah, it was sweet. He had it all set up. He had the the special kind of rod holders and everything, pointed me in a direction. We got to go shopping. I did mention that, didn't I? Wheat. We got we to gotta go get us some some. Uh, he told me to get, to get the flicker shed. I got to got to buy the smallest ones they make. Um, and he says I'll be in business. Uh, Damn river boys pointed me in the right direction on on what jig heads to get, ones that stand up on the bottom. If I'm using live bait, things like that. I learned a little bit when I fished with Eric B last year on the Wisconsin River. He's a little bit. He was a little new to to walleye fished at the time. Mostly he's sturgeon, flathead, and and a bass guy. He does a lot of that. Young kid. You know, young gun does really well. Um, and, and you know what? 
I'm enjoying the journey, whether it's whether it's Walmart or the journey I took catching my first flathead. Um, I remember fishing almost a year and then ending up at a place I was fishing like 30% of the time. I just crossed to the other side of the river, which happens to be 200 yards away. Boom, started getting on them. That was a valuable lesson for me, things like that. Um, I know we're doing a lot of talk about fish other than, you know, panfish and stuff, but. Well, what about crappie? My what? first experience with crappie was minnows in a pond. <laughs> My, my first experience with crappie was uh, um, there's a lake here in, uh, I think it's still McHenry County, called Island Lake. Um, and back in the day, there was a, 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 a an elderly gentleman who had a piece of property on there. And what he did is he took a bulldozer and he cut um, a trench in his backyard and busted it open to the lake. And the crappie would come in there in the spring and you'd get on. That's where I got my PB, which I kind of reset. But with some uh, road runners, the little underspin jigs, that's where I was introduced to crappie. And they were so much fun. I was a, a little kid, believe it or not, everybody in chat. At one time, I was a little kid. And that's where that introduced me to that. Um, a long, long yeah, time. He used to charge a dollar to park. So I guess, I don't know if you'd call it a pay lake or not. I don't know. But I was a kid. I didn't care. We were catching crappie and they tasted pretty darn good. Um, it was a heck of a good time. I had a good childhood fishing over there. That's where I started with crappie. And I moved into a lake here, uh, moved out this way. I did a little crappie fishing up in Wisconsin when we were up at uh, um, uh, resorts up in like Lando Lakes. I did some crappie fishing on Lake Lake Winnie. Winnie Begoshish, I think is the full name. I'm sure Luke knows what it is. Did a little crappie fishing up there. Some of it here on the Channel Lakes. And mo a lot of times I'm what happens is you, you stumble across something like that and it sparks that interest. It gets you going. It does. Um, it makes you want to fish. Like I I never saw a flathead except in pictures. And then I, I, I hooked up with a, a young gentleman named Alex here on the uh, on the bank. We met just chewing the fat, you know, a couple of nights a week. We'd see each other out there. and We started chasing them together. And before you know it, it turned into flathead fever. No joke. I um, My crappie fishing experience, when I figured out that you could catch them with jigs and how much fun that was, and it was, it's a little more work, but it's a, entirely more entertaining than, because of the, uh, the minnow thing is, that's a natural bait for them. So they go after them, but the jigs is not. If you can make them bite a jig, well, you've done something, which tends to lead you into tying jigs. Exactly. We were. I was going to get there. We were definitely going to go there. JNS Outdoor says, I grew up crappie fishing with minnows in the spring for the bank, uh, but I got to learn another way. Minnows are getting too expensive. You are not kidding. And tying jigs is a good thing, but we're, we'll, we'll get that way. We'll get to that, I should say. Um, I see Ryan setting hooks and crossing eyes in a house. I see Art. And Miss Tasha, I'm sorry, Tasha, you scroll up. Art and Adventure with Tasha. What's up, Tasha? JNS Outdoors, which I just highlighted. Parker Pursuits just came in. What's up, Jerry? Bank Angler of the Year, as far as I'm concerned. He's a damn good bank angler on that wonderful Mississippi River. Um, yeah, the when you when you first start catching fish on artificials, it definitely it, it kind of blows your mind because you hold that little piece of plastic or or that hand tied in your hand and you're like, man, I, I, it looks cool, but how do you get a fish to bite? And when you do and you figure out how to get them to do it, that that's when that's when you 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 start to lose it. At least for that's right. Time. Yep, I agree. It it, it becomes. Um... It becomes more um, interesting. It becomes more of a challenge, and it becomes more fun. It it just expands. It expands your passion. I don't know how else to to describe it. It really does. That that wanting never to stop learning, to get better, to find those bigger fish, find more fish, even cooking fish a different way. That's right. Yeah, Although, 
I if like I can fish fried. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Nothing fried is bad as far as I'm concerned. As long as as long as I you know, if, and I know James is listening. What's up, James? What's up, Katie? How you doing? Um, flaying fish. Nobody really taught me how to flay fish. In my family, you'd eat they would eat gut them, scale them, and eat them whole, or they'd stake them up. That's you know, what we used to do them, yeah. If we went smelt fishing and on Lake Michigan in the harbors in the fall, they were they would just cook them whole. They deep fry them a while. They're delicious. Yeah, my uh, brother-in-laws introduced me to fillet and fish, and um, I've never looked back. To tell you the truth, fillet is the way to go. Depending on the size of the fish, too. I've you know uh, smaller perch. Well, we can talk later. I like crappie on the half shell too. I need to do a. A catch and cook for that. That's a great way to eat crappie. Great way to eat crappie. Parker says, head. catching crappie in gin clear water on artificials is a great challenge. I'm sure he's right about that. Catching them in muddy water isn't that easy either, Parker. <laughs> 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 but you learn what colors work for you and what don't. That, that's and what time of the the day or the seasons and year seasons learn change their 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 uh, what they eat changes with seasons and with temperatures and with wind conditions and everything affects that. Zach says, "Has anyone had baked hybrid bass? No, but it sounds good. Baked fish isn't bad." Troy says they taste better when somebody else cleans them, and I will agree with that 100%. 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, what? Do, okay, now um, let, let's talk about how you got into tying jigs, Lyle. What, 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 Where would you start, and what, what got you going with that? The I started with tying with actually tying flies. Um, we used to go to Bennett Springs, which is a big trout place not very far from where we live now but uh i was service manager for a five division gm sh uh, dealership in lebanon and um i could go down there to uh, the trout place and fish and we was always there opening day and my brother-in-law and i did and it got to the point where we just we got tired of catching them we could catch so many of them we just walk up and down the banks and look for the big ones and you couldn't get them to bite you just had to take a a fly and floated in their mouth in the current. And that's how we got to catch it. And we got to catch the big ones and uh, people get mad at us because we catch them and they couldn't and they turn us in and the game warden to come behind us and watch us. And it, it just got to be a joke. So that's when I got to tie in jigs because I wanted to catch bluegill and crappie uh, because, because of all the uh, political part of catching those big trout. And we mm -hmm. didn't none of them. I don't like to eat trout. They're not that good. So, yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, and and bluegill and crappie. Well, they're awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> you might as well you might as well catch something that you enjoy eating. And then there's there's plenty of bluegill and crappie. Yeah, they're they, they're they pretty have, much they're the food source. Of almost all the fish that are out there. That's exactly right. And and they have huge uh, uh, deliveries every year, and uh, they grow fast. They don't have a long life cycle so it doesn't hurt to um to eat a bunch of them and they're great table fare so uh that's that's where that come in so i started tying jigs in and dial's got some really cool jigs and those of you that have won them in the past can attest to that i know i've i've gotten some from him and and i'm, I'm very happy with them and and uh it, it's panfish nation fly, jigs and flies or flies and jigs on facebook flies i keep jigs, believe Flies and jigs on Facebook. You can check out the pictures of the stuff that Lyle's tying. Pretty cool stuff. And we also got, you know, people that come in here to do the same. Uh, we obviously Kim Burnett and Eric Massey, they're in here quite a bit. So. James, James Dockery comes in and ties with us once in a while. Chad yes, Fields does. does. Chad is really good at it. I think that we need to help him buy some supplies because I think he's low and uh, that would get him back into us. He hadn't tied any in a while. And I'd be yeah. glad to help him with that. We need to do that. I need. I still need to go, and I know David's out there. I still need to get that uh, uh, six, five or six weight uh, uh, fly rod to match the reel that he sent me. Thank you again, David. That's another journey that I plan on taking. Yeah, yes, hopefully I, I, get some time. I just sent one to um, to D. Chad bought one from for D for her birthday, and uh, she didn't know she was getting it. And uh, you can 
can uh, contact D Fields and ask her how she likes hers. And um, Matt with Wanna Be Outdoors has got one too. He Lisa. does. Yeah. Very, very good stuff. I know D was so happy to get that rod. So I she sent a picture as soon as she opened it up on her birthday. I was <laughs> yeah. like, and it's sharp. What did you use on a handle for that? That was not the handle, but the rod. The I think it was the uh, okay. real. The real the seat. Real was, seat. I forgot on that what kind of wood that was. Um, is an exotic wood of some kind. I don't remember. I get so many different ones. I can't remember. And I don't make those. I buy those. Um, I have a lathe that I could turn them on, but I'm out of room in the shop. I just don't have any more room for the wood lathe. I just, mm -hmm. I just don't. Yeah, I can make a twelve weight. I just have to check on on the blanks because right now, I was telling Mark um, earlier. I shipped two rods just today and um, the shipping on them more than doubled uh, in the last few months. And the PCV that I used to pay $8 for a uh, 10 foot section is now 25. So shipping has got out of hand. So if you live <sighs> close, I'd give you all those that I told you I got sitting around from all the rods I got in the garage. Yeah, I used to uh, get. I used to have a friend of mine that worked for a carpet place. He's now passed away, and he would save the center cardboard tubes out of carpet rolls. They work extremely well because they're real heavy duty, and they're probably stronger than PCV pipe. Yet they don't weigh a whole lot. And um, but he's gone, and I don't have access to those. And I tried cardboard. Um, the post office makes triangle shaped ones that are like three uh -huh. foot long. And the lady up there says, just tape them together. Well, I did. And I had fairly good success with that because they give those away. But right. people complained about them. Hmm. It was cheap looking because I taped them together. And I thought, you know what? It ain't worth listening to your bullshit over it. So I just put them in PCV. And I went back to buying the, the PCV. And now you got to pay for it. Yeah, that, it is what it is. I mean. The, the rods do get there safe, definitely. That's a good thing. You know but what, though? I, I have a story, and I know this is off topic. That's okay. I shipped 12 rods that was ultralights in a PCV tube for a guy for Christmas for his kids and grandkids. They got run over by a forklift. Oh. You can see the tire marks on it. Broke every one of them. They delivered them to this guy. And they called me up and told me, I said, well, I'll replace them. You know, I got their insurance. So mm -hmm. ain't no problem. I had to rebuild all those and ship them. Oh, they late getting them for Christmas, of course. But they already knew what they was getting because they seen them broke or not. Uh, and they all had their names and stuff on them. But, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff you run into. So PCV is not, PVC is not foolproof, but it's probably the best thing we have today. Uh, to ship them in, and I'd use the, I use the thin wall stuff, uh, not the schedule forty because it just it just weighs too much. There ain't no sense mm -hmm. paying that much for shipping. For shipping, right? And you can go a little. There is Van with V three Customs. What's up, Van? Fish in the Mid South wants to know what a good jig vice is. I have a spider, and I like it really well. I, I need to get a better one. I like. I got one of the beginner ones. You can get that over from Kim over at Limits Tackle. He's got a heck of a deal on a heck of a. He does. He's got on a, really a beginner cool. kit. The one I got is a Griffin Odyssey Spider. It has a um, rotating head on it, and I dearly love it. I've got a cheaper one that I've had for years and years and years, but I really like that spider. It's lightweight. Um, if you want to move it around, it's sturdy. I've had zero issues with it. Zero. Uh, they make one that's a little bit heavier duty and and uh, probably better quality. And if I ever upgrade, that's probably what I'll get. Excuse me. I never heard of a Resenti vice. I'll have to look that one up. Oh, res oh, them's high dollar. Yeah. High dollar. <laughs> Yeah, they're having, but they are very nice. What's I, up, man? What's up, JVT? How you doing, David Smith? Uh, did I miss? And Emily's in here. What's going on? Emily's from uh, across the pond. She's over in England. So thank you for oh, tuning welcome, in. Welcome, Emily. We're glad to have you. And there's so, Sandy. 
there's Sandy, the better half of the Van household. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do a lot more jig tying over the winter. I think I'm going to get a. Um, I'm going to set myself a goal of, I don't well, know, maybe a uh, hundred jigs for personal use. That's good. That's, that's, that's what you need to do. Some of the companies fine. that we buy supplies from had had trouble getting stuff. And they all put in great big orders and stuff. And those orders are coming in now. So things are a little easier to get. Um, Woods and Water is one of my favorite places to get stuff. We've had we've had them on our uh, show. Um, they have really good stuff. Of course, like you said, um, um, Steve with Limits Tackle is an mm -hmm. excellent source to buy stuff. Um, he does a show with, uh, with uh, Kim Burnett and... Um, SK SK every Wednesday night mm -hmm. and uh, you can send him a message uh, on Facebook and he'll tell you if he's got it what the cost is and he's got everything he and like I say if you don't if you need a kit put together he'll put your kit together he will he's a hustler he knows how to do it and every week on that show if he's got some sort of special or he's got a lot of extra stuff laying around that he wants to clear out he'll let you know during the show that's and, right and and that's how you catch a lot of deals like I got you know, he sells everything from jig tie kits to these awesome fly boxes here. These are the bomb. I'm not going to say I what I paid for them, but they were they were cheaper than than any place else. I got ten of them over here full of jigs. <laughs> you hear that, honey? I need ten of them. She's giving me a dirty look. I got. I, it's unbelievable how many I've got. Ted, I got boxes of them. I'm going to say hello to D. What's going on, D? I didn't see her name pop up in here, but hello, D. I said hello to her in chat, too. She's probably watching on a big screen. Probably so. I wonder if Chad bought her a reel yet for that fly rod. I understand that he did, but I'm not 100% on that. I'm just not typing in. Fish in the Mid-South has the question. I'm going to put it in there. Uh, just look up... Uh, Limits tackle on Facebook and he'll set you up there. If you need an That's email, right. if you need an email address, go over to SK's show on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time with SK's Crop Catch and Adventure. And he'll I'm be on. Uh, yes, that if you'd mention Mark or my name to, to Steve, he would understand that and tell him that we sent you over there because we've both spent quite a bit with him. Yeah. <laughs> he I gotta know who we are. I was just going through a box of my crappie stuff that I got from him, and and uh, that's quite a bit of stuff. I'll tell you how good he is. Yeah, I got a big list. I need to. I need to. And and if I'll you're looking, for, if you need, you want want really good hand ties, obviously you know you go to Lyle or or Kim Burnett. He's got that stuff. I need to get me some of them house flies from. Yeah, they're cool. From, they're from, cool. Yeah, I I tell you how good Steve is at Limits Tackle. I called him up one day or or messaged him. I didn't call him. And I said, hey, I understand you got feathers, certain kind of feathers. He said, I do. I said, I want all of the most popular ones you got. He sent me a box this long, that big a square, all feathers, all put in plastic baggies, Ziploc baggies, and sent them to me. Of course, you got to pay for them, but that's okay. It's exactly what I want, and I'm out of some of the colors, but now i got a starting point of what was the most popular and the ones that I use, I only have to, to reorder those and I don't have to reorder the ones I don't use as many of. Um, great place to get stuff like that. And, and he's got everything. And if you want um, uh, electronics, any brand, I would check with Steve first. Yep. He'll set you up. Everything, any, you know, he, I know he has rods in on a K. I think he's always got crappie rods. I don't know if he's just doing the big long jigging ones, but he'll get you what you need. Everything from fly tying supplies. Uh, yeah. He's got, and he'll make or get you any kind of jig head you want. He'll put special yeah. hooks on it. He's got one of them uh, jig making know. machines. I, I forget. He does the jigs for him, but he makes jigs every day, I think. Lyle, I ordered some jigs last night without you, bud. Oh. Wait till you see these. I'll send you a link. We'll we'll talk later. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
I'm, I'm gonna be. I, I might not. I'm gonna be greedy. I want to have the guy who I bought him from on my show too. So we'll talk later. <laughs> Might be that guy that Luke likes up north. You think you think it might be? <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't need any of those. Um, but they that was a great. Cool. That was a great show last night over at Carver Fishing Podcast. That was I missed good. that one. I was tired. I went to bed early. Believe it or not. Uh, good for you. I, I did too. I hard to believe, but <laughs> you know, I was fishing this morning in 37 degrees, Lyle. Oh, you lucky man. Lucky my butt. I had that heat of buddy going in my boat for the first time. Thank goodness I did. It was like 46 last night here, I think, which that's pretty good. I but I like 30s and 40s and uh no higher than if it never got over 70 degrees, I would be a happy camper. Rebecca yeah, and Jamie, if, hey. Hey Rebecca and Jamie, I want to make sure we didn't miss them. Yeah, 70 degrees is the perfect weather for that. So yeah, I, I love colder weather. Uh, I don't like it as cold as I used to like it, but um, I still like it cold. I don't want the water froze. I don't want the guides freezing up on my cast. Oh, that's a pain in the butt, let me tell it you. It is. You got to dump them in the water. <laughs> but, you know, I, I used to like that cold weather, but I don't anymore. I can't. I'm just, I just can't handle it um, uh, at my age and it's some issues that I have, but. Uh, I do not like hot weather. That 100-degree weather, it killed me. I never hardly got out of the house except to mow the grass. You know, it was just – that was unbearable. We had over a month of it straight. But uh, Yeah, I don't do well in that kind of heat. Yeah, don't well, do full well. figure guys can't hang with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, full figure. I'm big boned. I don't know what you're talking yes. about. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, – I, I, you know, I, I'm started tying jigs with you last year over the winter. I have a little more time in the winter, obviously, because it's winter. Um, yeah. so I, like I said, I plan on doing a little more. My, my whole journey was meeting up with you, uh, watching what you were doing. I, I set the goal. I wanted to catch a fish on, uh, something that I made myself. Um, uh, we tied a bunch of jigs and like the very first one that I tied, I tied up. And I got a bass. I don't, I'm not a big bass guy, but it was a fish. I was pretty surprised um, to do so. And uh, since then, I've caught a few. Uh, hopefully, uh, I got one. I got, you know, and, and Luke's going to give me some old man business for this. He was being mean to me yesterday, Dad. <laughs> but I need, I need to get a, yeah, I need to get a, one of the magnifying glasses so I can tie the real little tiny nymphs and stuff. I think I'm going to put them to work. I've been tying several flies here recently, Mark. Let me see. If I, can, I don't know if you can see this or not. There's our buddy Freddie with the $5 super chat. He says, Choo Choo, he's starting the super chat train. Thank you very much, Freddie. Appreciate you. That's the size hooks I've been tying flies on recently. <laughs> Look at my fingernail compared to that. So. That's a tiny little thing. What size? Do you know what size that is offhand? This is a 10, and I've got some 12s and 14s to tie. Now, those are really small. I was going to order some Mustad 12 outs I saw on uh, on oh, Amazon. They were gigantic. No, they're not. They made a mistake. They were, they were they were size 12 hooks, not 12 oh, odds. 12 hooks. Okay. They're the smallest circle hooks I ever seen in my life. They're like yeah. this big. I'll have to pull them out and show them to you. Look at this, Josh already. Sorry, says. <laughs> Thank you so much, Freddie. We do appreciate it. There's Aaron. He says, it's crappie time, boys. Still smoking the big baits. Really? Yeah, well, you know, the shad are full size right now, right? At least for the the this year's hatch they are. So uh, I, I've caught crappie with four-inch inch shad in their bellies. We're talking an 11-inch crappie with a, a four-inch, a numerous four-inch shad in their bellies. Wow. Not a problem. That's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're they're when they're hungry, they're hungry. So I've definitely come across that. So don't be afraid to use big baits. You'd be surprised if they're not if they're not taking minnows. Uh, try something else. Start big, go start big, go small, or start small, go big. Go go through your arsenal like that. I think that's a good place to start. Like like with the walleye thing today, those size ten husky jerks weren't doing it after talking to a local guy who's who's found some success. He's like, oh, you need to downsize them. So. So what we're definitely going to try. 
Yeah. Weekend Angler says, Mark, those number 12 circle hooks are good for bluegill, especially when you're catching bait because they don't swallow them. Cool. Well, I, you know, I, I I held on to them because I knew I'd come up with a, I knew I'd I'd find a place to use them. That could very well work. So. Yep. Yep. There's Jesse just joined us. Thanks for coming in, Jesse. Jesse, quit lying to us. <laughs> Did you see what he said about us? He's. It's, I don't know if he's being sincere. I'll take it. I'll take it too. I'm just kidding, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse lives close to me. We're gonna have to hook up and fish one of these times. Hey, there's yeah. Split Shot Bates in the house. What's up, Split Shot? How you doing? That is bait, bait, bolts. <laughs> bait, bolt. Fields to Water says, I didn't get to do my panfish journey this year again. Maybe I'll bring that back next year, Troy. That'll be cool. I'll do it again next year. Even if Dockery's in it, I'll do it. I had a good time with that. That was fun. Even if Dockery's in it. <laughs> well, you know, I came home with, with eight nice size eaters, like 12, 13 inches, but Dockery got, what, 200 that day? <laughs> it was a big number. It was a big number. Have they crashed? They found their they found their crate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time they went in there. My uh, wife's over here. To, to, we're gonna have a lot of fun with these dogs. So they are. If they learn that that's their safe place, that's where they'll always go to sleep. Well, we got them from a reputable uh, uh, breeder, and he, uh, uh, in my opinion, he does things the way uh, I think they should be done. So. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, Josh good. killed it too. He got on that bluegill bite and he put a hundred in the oh, boat. Oh, he put a lot of gills in the boat. Yeah, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't compete with these animals. Animals is right when you're catching as many as uh, as uh, Josh and and James Dockery did. That's a ton of fish, man. Just a ton. But I have to say that those those panfish tournaments was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I know a guy that's working on maybe putting one together for next year. We'll see if he gets it done. All right. I haven't heard anything out of it lately, so we'll see. I know. Fly fishing, Lyle. Um, I got to get the gear together, and uh, I don't know if I'll get to it until spring. Um, there might be a chance for me to do it for uh, stocker trout. That was that was the plan. I think I got a month before that happened, and uh, maybe we'll try it out there. I use some of the, uh, you know, Dave over at Double Hook Angling sent me a couple of nymphs that he had. I think those would work perfect. Uh, the so, here, they're the best. Yeah, that's what. What is my wife looking at here? I don't know. I have no. She idea. could join you on screen. Yeah, right. You want to come on screen, Sheila? No, she's got paw prints all over her. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, didn't know, I didn't know anything about that maybe i can make that that'd be awesome i didn't know sheila, that had one down there maybe, maybe sheila wants to go to branson she's been wanting to go there shows. she's been wanting to go there for a while i might be able to talk her into that if i can talk uh grandma into watching the pups i don't think that'll be a problem so what did Chad, Chad said something over here. The Slab Masters was awesome, but hard to keep up with. Yeah, there was there was a lot of fish caught. What are you getting messages there, Lyle? Anything good? My grandson is sent me a, a image of his tackle box, and he's I give him stuff to tie up jigs with, uh -huh. and he mixed them up with some of the jigs that I give him. So now he's got mine and his in a in a. Uh, plastic box so he doesn't he doesn't message me too often but so when he does i want to check him out he's uh so far he's the one that wants to uh to fish with me the most and we'll see how that carries on he's a hard working little guy and and uh i showed him how to tie a jig so i hope he's staying after him. <clears throat> the, the, well are you, is how far is he from you oh i don't know probably 20 minutes. Oh, well, there you go. You got to yeah. make a date with him and get out there. Yeah. He comes over and uh, his parents go to on Saturday. Sometimes they go to uh, uh, livestock sales here in town on Saturdays and he don't want to go. So he comes and spends the day with me. Yeah. Well, see, this is him. He's getting started with, with 
with you and he'll remember that stuff the rest of his life you know yeah check that out well i know i'll remember it the rest of my life <laughs> biggest crappie tournament in the country hundred thousand first place i'm not ready for that i don't think i'm nowhere near that i i yeah. can't keep, i can't keep up with people in chad's tournament let alone that's a, a big number right have, there have kevin rogers up there to compete against that'd be insane or couple of the other guys that are on us case show mm -hmm. you know that, that's another thing on my 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 crappie journey is, is to hit one of these mecca lakes whether it's in mississippi or, or or texas or or even heading down to like lake of egypt and rend lake down there they're they're pretty oh, good those great locations to fish um i did have a cousin who's who's passed it recently but or not real recent but he used to as soon as duck and goose season was over every year he would go down to uh mississippi i believe it was grenada that he went grenada? To. he spent three months down there and uh then he'd come back oh. and they yeah they they had a fifth wheel camper and they just left it down there and uh, they'd go down there every every uh year about february and they'd stay till june uh, about the time the bad weather was gone from here, then they come back home. He had they had a place outside here, the farm and and uh, stuff. But uh, uh, he caught a lot of huge crappie down there, huge crappie. So I, I always want to go down there. <clears throat> Kim Burnett says he talked to Kevin the other day, and he's going to be at the tournament. That's cool. You know, maybe we can get a. Uh, we'll we'll talk after the show. I just had an idea. Okay. But that looks like a lot of fun. Um, and and I'm gonna I'll reach out to Kim and see if uh, maybe they they got that stuff either online or televised or something. I'd like to check that out. That would be pretty cool to see. I've seen catfish in the past tournaments. I haven't seen any crappie stuff myself. So I, that's definitely Ransom's an hour drive for me. That's not bad at all. <laughs> that's no. kind of like my Mendota. How come you ain't there more, Lyle? There's no reason for me to go to. We've been to Branson so much. Used to be every time we'd have somebody visit, we'd take them to a show in Branson. Mm -hmm. And I've just got burnt out on it, to be quite honest. The last show that we went to that I can remember, I took Cindy to a Pam Tillis um, Christmas show. I think that's the last one we went to. Look at this. Chad is sweet talking, Kim. He wants to be partners with him. I, that's what it sounds like, don't it? You know, that's another thing that you can do is uh and it's got I, that Chad Fields money, he can pay the entry fee. There, there you go. <laughs> I was gonna say find yourself a mentor, but I thought that was pretty brilliant to you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, copy day says the way in our oh, no. I don't I don't have TV, so I I can't Look watch at this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Christine. I didn't know you wanted to go. <laughs> we haven't been to Branson in years. We really haven't. We took Cindy's mom down there. We took my brother down there. and I don't know, a bunch of people. We, whenever they'd visit, we'd take them down there. But uh, that was a long time ago, mostly family. Well, you got an opinion on that Chad statement? He says, you catch him and I'll look good in the pics. <laughs> <laughs> he must be talking to Kim about that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Kim should probably do pretty good in them tournaments. He catches a lot. If it was bluegill, I know he would because he gets a lot of big bluegill. Oh, I, I guess it's an invite only for only from Wally Marshall. Ooh. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not looking forward for him sending me no invite in the near future. <laughs> you got to earn that pretty hardcore well, stuff. I'm right. thinking you're right about that. Maybe I could build, build him some jigs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Get your name on somebody's jersey. Oh, man. I've been through all that before. Yeah, I know you have. That that whole tournament sponsorship deal that's out there, whether it's tournaments or YouTube and stuff, that's a whole other animal. That's another journey it that is, I've... It's a, and it's, it's a job. It is? It's correctly, it's work. It really is. And uh, it's not that I don't didn't mind doing it, but I was, <clears throat> pardon me, I was younger then, and uh, mm -hmm. I like naps in the middle of the afternoon now. Full of yeah. piss and vinegar now? You you, <laughs> <laughs> you like potato salad. <laughs> I do like potato salad. Ask Betty Jean, she can tell you. 
Oh, yeah, she does. Uh, <laughs> Every time Cindy makes potato salad, I send her a picture of it. Fish and Freedom. Richard says the big catfish tournament in New Madrid is this Saturday. 70 boats this year. Already some huge 20 plus foot sea arcs rolling in pre fishing. Yep. That's a well, great great area to fish. Kim's got three pro staffers fishing it. Cool. Good for him. If I was any good at crappie fishing, I'd ask for some pro staff stuff, but I'm I'm lucky enough. I got some stuff sent to me from time to time. So there you go. Then again, learning, learning, learning. Never stop. Yep. 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 So what was your famous your favorite tournament you ever fished? Um the favorite tournament I ever fished was probably Monsters on the Ohio. I just thought you didn't like fishing the Ohio. I don't. It wasn't about fishing the Ohio. It was about all the people. We done a live show down there uh -huh. uh, at a bait shop, Jim and Sheila's. Uh, we do that every year, and we I come up with the idea one one year for to Jim. I said, "Hey, what do you think about uh, cookout down there?" And I said, hell, I'll bring stuff down and we'll have we'll do a live show. We'll do it outside out of your building. And he said, No, we want you in the building doing the show. He said, I'll bring the stuff down there. Brandon could cook hot dogs and hamburgers. He says, I'll get all the stuff. And after that, we done that every year until the end of it. Uh and I had that's where I met uh Jim Catman Clark and his beautiful daughter. One of my favorite all-time interviews is with her. Uh we had a great time. K Bug was was an excellent uh, little girl to have on there. She was I don't know four foot tall and about as big around as my wrist at the time. And now she's a lady. She's full grown. She's in high school, going to proms and stuff. And and uh, I met so many good people there. And we would pull into that bait shop when Cindy and I would get there. And people would be waiting for us when we got there. Um, and before that, we'd go down there and um, we'd pull in, get there late at night. And people would be staying up to help us back in because we stayed at a Ramada Inn. Parking was horrible. And they'd help us get back in. And it was an ordeal in the parking lot every year when we showed up down there. Uh, and we'd stay up late at night. Of course, you know. Cindy go to bed and I'd stay out there having beverages with folks and we'd talk fishing and we'd talk shows and we'd talk everything under the sun and Doc would be down there and and uh, Janet and Bink and of course uh, uh, all the guys that was doing the show with us would would do that and uh, Keith and and his and Malone and his uncle would be down there and uh, it was just a huge deal. And we'd go out in the morning and come in about 11 and we'd start doing a show and we didn't stop doing shows until we was done late at night. And we'd pick up our bait, go to the motel room. That was on a Thursday. We'd pre fish Friday and then we had tournament Saturday and we'd head home Sunday morning. But um, it got to be to where it was just more about spending time with the people than it was about fishing. And that's yeah. what made it fun. Kind of like, kind of like our trip to uh, that special place in Wisconsin that we're not mentioning anymore. We're keeping that to ourselves. <laughs> you guys are all invited. You know what we're talking about. Uh, that, I, that's like my version of that. I really have fun going over there, hanging out. Oh, with I do everybody. too. I do too. I just wish it wasn't quite as so far because yeah. uh, I forgot how far it is for me, but it's a long way. And uh, excuse me, I got a headache, but uh, it is. It's a lot of fun. Well, let's say hello to Don R in the house. There's my buddy Kenneth over to take down catfish. And I saw Stan come in. What's going on, Stan? Thanks for showing up, bud. Joe Buck 66. Joe the man. I think you said something about him being in here already, but it don't hurt to mention him twice. It doesn't at all. <clears throat> Hold on, we, got, we, had, we had a lot of fun with a lot of people in, in those tournaments. And, and uh, you got to start out small. The, the thing that I can tell you is never jump into something with both feet, get stick your little toe in there first and, and practice up and, 
And once you win a few or finish in the top five for a bunch of them, you're better off to uh, do it that way and, and go from there. And uh, once you get to be pretty successful, then jump up to the big ones. But um, the big ones are so much of a social, social event now um, that that is where the fun part of it was for us. <clears throat> Ricky Slow Tax Adventures uh, got a question. He says, Lyle and Mark, due to not having a fly rod, what's the best leader, line, swivel, flow, weight, setup you use uh, with a crappie rod and reel? I don't know. I don't I, I don't fly fish as of yet. Uh, Lyle, do you have any recommendations? If I was, was going to be using a crappie rod, I would be using – a four pound test line and casting them out that way. You can cast flies out that way. And if you can't get them out far enough, either use a jig or put the tiniest little split shot on ahead of it and use that to cast it out. Um, but I, if I was going to use flies, I, I would be using a fly rod. Hey, real quick, I want to. Say hello to Jay's catfishing. What's up, my friend? How you doing? I haven't seen him in around in a while, so it's good to see yeah, him. To have you back here. in chat. Thank you for stopping in, Jay's. Yeah, as far as if you're going to use a light fly, there's something called a water float or a water bobber. You can look that up on on yeah. Google. I use them when I'm trout fishing uh, <laughs> stockers. I don't I don't have any good trout places except for that two times a year but i've used them before and it's a little clear bobber it's got a stopper in it and you fill it up with however much water you want to float uh the 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 fly or the super light bait that you're casting out there uh that way um i would use it everything with like store-bought flies but now that i have some 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 good stuff i'll be using it with them to uh um uh just like one of them little number 10 hooks with a wax worm on it i've used them like that too uh, one they, of my favorite ways to use jigs and flies with a with a spinning rod is to use a slip float and a bobber stopper and just set it to where that thing only floats down um six eight ten twelve inches mm -hmm. and cast it out and uh, watch your bobber and it'll tell you when you got a bite yeah, the, the good thing with those those water bobbers is you can use like a dry fly with those. And keep, right. It'll, it'll keep them up on the top. So I've, I've, I've had some pretty good success with that, definitely. Josh says, can you not put a weighted bobber in 18 inches above the fly? We used to do that with little foam poppers for bluegill. That'll work. Do that. You can do that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and congrats. Were really good too for bluegill, especially this time of year because there's so many crickets and grasshoppers and stuff flying around that bounce in the water. Right now, foam poppers are a hot ticket to catch bluegill. I got to learn to tie some of them too. Those look like they'd be fun. See, I'm going down this. I knew this was going to happen, Lyle. I'm going down this fly fishing rabbit hole already. And all I got is a reel and a few flies. I knew we were going to, that was going to happen. I fought for like two years with you guys. I really did. I think I'm done. <laughs> the next time, um, the next time we do a Saturday night tie, I will explain more about my spider um, fly tying rig because it has rotational uh, stuff, which makes it faster for me to tie. Uh, that may not be true for everyone, but you can you can really whip that out, and, and I like it uh, better than fighting the the Chanel around the hook mm -hmm. uh, base. So uh, it's an advantage to me, but it's there's a lot of lot of advantages to that one, especially when you're putting on um, uh, different things on your flies, whether it be feathers or shinies or whatever it is. Uh, it just makes it easier. Uh, it is easy for me for that to move around. So uh, the next time we do that, I'll do an in-depth deal on that. Uh, yeah, that's that's the one thing that my vice doesn't do. It doesn't <coughs> I don't think it turns like that, and it does get a little cumbersome, like putting the chenille on the jigs and stuff. Yep. But other than yep. that, don't let that stop you from getting one of them starter ones because they work just fine. And you, you'll yeah, be they do. They, and that's what I had for years and years and years, and I ended up giving it to my grandson for him to use, and um, 
I hope he's building the hell out of him. I know he is because he just showed me a picture a while ago. So that works out really good. So uh, I'm glad that he's enjoying it. And, um, you know, you can build them on, on those starter packs forever. Um, Dave, I'm not sure. we got to get one set up. We just What are you doing this Saturday, Lyle? I'll be home this Saturday. I don't know right now. I can right. say I got Keep a brother that's in the hospital, and my sister just got over a broken leg, and uh, one of them 75 and the other 74, and I've been stretched out from Springfield to North Missouri here lately, and uh, I can't make any plans. It's too far ahead right gotcha. now. All right. And you did have an addition to your family as well, didn't you, Lyle? I did. My great nephew, just him and his wife just had a baby this morning, and uh, so I'm a great, great uncle again. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. I know that was uh, Michael's first grandson. So he's really wound up about that. And that's down and they live down in Tennessee. So uh, I'm glad that everybody's down there is doing really good. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, amazing picture. I got to see the little feller today. So we're all wound up about that. <clears throat> Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I can tell you were happy when you told me about that earlier. I didn't want to oh, forget yeah. to that. So, yeah. Yeah. and, and, you know, it's another fisherman in the family. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You want to tell us what his name is? Um, I don't even know. Okay, gotcha. Oh, didn't you say it was Noah Michael? That's it, Noah Michael. Yeah, Noah I forgot. Michael, that's it. Yeah, because I like that name a lot. I wanted to hear it that was name. Michael, and then my his son was Michael, so I knew Michael would be in there somewhere, but I, I couldn't remember the Noah part. I mean, it just happened, so I, I got to remember all of it. Cool, Al. Well, we're we're coming up on an hour. You got anything else? Um, not really. I have an itty bitty kitty tournament Saturday, but I'm free to watch fly time. I got you, buddy. I got you. We'll we'll get one set up real soon and do that. They use they usually last more than an hour. <laughs> yeah, they last for a while. We'll have some adult beverages and we'll just yeah. It's um it's not. Always for the faint of heart, but we try to behave ourselves the best we can. But it's Saturday night, so uh, just so everybody knows, we're not we're not angels on Saturday nights. I don't know we're about you. I'm an any other day. I'm an angel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's what we do, and we have a good time, and it's a lot of fun, and we try to to help people uh, build some good stuff. And if there's any questions or anything, we'll answer them at the time and. And uh, usually we got Mark and Chad and James Dockery and myself, and we've had Kim Burnett and a, a host of other guys. Yeah, Eric Massey we've had Eric, on there. Yeah, and, and some other people. And, and we'll have more, you know, when we start doing them. And if we start doing them on a regular basis, uh, we'll have a lot of people come in and, and share their information with us and uh, try to get their name out because every time that we do something like that and we have a new guest or a existing guest, we try to promote them to where they get more people watching them, their stuff also. So it works out. I just show up because it's a good time. It is a good time. I remember the first time Kim came on there, he pointed a couple of things that I needed to change about mine and I was super grateful for it. So it's, it's always good to watch those shows because we kind of tell everybody each, each person's, kind of tells what they're doing and any the other people not all, they don't critique it they just give whatever their opinion is and what they like about it or, or hey something you might not know yeah. stuff like that is, i found it invaluable so it's a good time here's the thing that we, we we've always or i've always done in the past i think everybody else has we'll build jigs while we're doing that show and then i'll give some of them away at yep. the end of the thing and everybody else does too so uh usually there's several winners they get to watch us and learn how to tie jigs, and then they get free stuff too. That's what we do. Usually, everybody who's tying jigs picks out the ones they want to give away. And usually, yeah. what, I, what I'll do is I'll I'll tie. You know, let's say I tie four of each color, four of the same. Put them in there. I'll give one of each one away. Usually, that's what I was doing in the past. Yeah. So, yep. I, I usually tie up uh, one kind, and then I'll give four or five of those away. Because I've learned my lesson, Mark. Never tie just one of anything. You'll lose it and you'll forget what it was. <laughs> you ain't kidding. I'm going to start working on a little, some smaller jigs and, and, and flies, hopefully coming up here soon, which is why I need that magnifying thing. Yeah. 
My, wife, my wife's got one. It might show up down here. She'll beat you like she owns you. <laughs> I just bought her two puppies. She should be happy. Joe Bucks, it's, it's better than anything you could see on TV or at the movies. Thank you. We I'm glad it. you enjoy it, sir. Uh, uh, Dave says, I have my Friday morning's coffee and jig time live tomorrow morning. I'll give away jigs again. That's awesome, Dave. I hope I, you don't do it too early so I make sure I'm up. <laughs> I had fun helping Dave celebrate his 500 subscriber. We did a giveaway over there on his channel, and, 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 and it was a good time. I was actually on the water. I was able to help him out with that, and I appreciate the chance. That's to awesome. Go. Yeah, Dave's a great guy. Very great guy. So what you got going on this weekend? You got all that family stuff going on, I imagine. Yeah, huh? That's where I'm at, uh, waiting to see how things go, to see if we got to go back up north to see Mark. and We'll check on him and, and go from there. If I don't make that trip again this weekend, it's just three and a half hours up there and three and a half hours back, and I usually do it one day and visit. And It's just really hard to do anymore, but um, – you know, as high as everything is, I don't want to be staying up there. Yeah. This high. So we got to because at some point we're going to have to. So that's kind of where we're at. But And if I go up there, I'm not that far from Dockery. I think he, you would think he'd offer to take me fishing. He'd take you fishing. All you got to do is tell him he's, you're there. Probably so. <laughs> he would. <laughs> you guys would be both hitting dock roofs. I want videos of that. No, I don't hit no dock roofs. Dung, dung. I want to double. It'll sound like <laughs> I need to make a new Christmas video for the channel. We can I'm do that. I'm pretty sure that Katie would be right there with her camera mm. getting all that down. <laughs> Maybe it'd be Cindy and Docker hitting the dock roof. Maybe. I don't know about all that. <laughs> Cindy would never. You don't want in on it, do you? <laughs> Cindy would never. Yeah, okay. She'll bring well, the, she the, she the short. She can't reach the doctor. Oh, st whoa. <laughs> Be whoa. like doctor. Her doctor about the same height. You know, she can hit you with the frying pan without having to get on camera. You know that. I do you? know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Josh says, if they both hit the dock roof, I'm using auto-tune to turn it into dueling banjos. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, man. We're, gonna, we're going to be live Monday night with Chad and Josh on Catfish Weekly, followed by Mark with the Catfish and Crappie podcast. And then next week, we will be right back here on Thursday evening after the bait shop with Chad and Freddie. And Mark and I will be right here with Panfish Nation going at it again. We'll try to come up with a great topic, maybe a guest. We'll see how that works out. I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. Be sure to tune in next week because that's where we'll be, right here. Have a great weekend, guys. See you soon.